We're here today with Sam Brown. He is a VP for research and a research professor at Intermountain Health, a professor of medicine at University of Utah. And he also publishes in biomedicine, ethics, intellectual history, and theology. So thanks for being here, Sam. Glad to be with you, Jenny. Thank you. Today we're talking about Alma 39 to 42, and we're looking at an artwork by Annie Henry Nader. It's called Between Heaven and Earth. You can see it right here. And this is from 2014. It's a mixed media piece. Sam, can you tell us a little bit about how this piece um, relates to the scriptures in Alma? That's a good question. 39 to 42 is that encounter between Alma and Corrient, and where mm -hmm. Alma's the established patriarch, and Corrient is supposed to be on his mission. They ended up having sex with a woman, and maybe shacking up with her. And okay. <laughs> Alma's a little, you know, it's the mission president moment that no one wants to have, and Alma's embarrassed and sad and frightened. And interestingly, you can wonder about the dynamics, father and son, with Alma then using this as a time for theological and philological reflections on the word restoration and justice. But there's this complicated context for ultimately a fairly intense depiction in stages, admittedly, mm -hmm. confusing a little bit about the stages of people coming spirit back to body and then judgment and consignment to their final state. Right. But ultimately it's trying to talk about the fact that you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. And and then there's a, a, Alma does this little turn with restoration, meaning not restoration to your primordial purity, which others might have thought, but uh -huh. restoration meaning that after you've been dead for some period of time, the person you were as a living person will be restored to you. And if that's a good person, mm -hmm. restored to that goodness. If you're a bad person, restored to that badness. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it's theologically actually sort of complicated and mm -hmm. interesting. So what Nader does with this is it looks to me like probably the spirits and bodies have been reunited at this point. Okay. So they're the then enfleshed dead. Mm -hmm. And they're at that moment of restoration, which Alma says means being who you have always, who you have most recently been, mm -hmm. forward into the afterlife. But I, I feel like Nader has some fun. I don't know whether she was specifically engaging the Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis's oh, right, book yeah. on Heaven and Hell. Yeah. Um, but you get a sense that the people who are being restored to the misery that they planted while they were alive mm. are deciding they'd like to stay that way. Mm. In Lewis's Great Divorce, he depicts hell as a place you choose to stay. Right. And yeah. as soon as you don't want to be in hell anymore, you leave hell. That's the Great Divorce imagery. And I thought at the bottom of that, there, there's that yeah. circular compass around mm -hmm. the segregating resurrected dead in the process of restoration. Mm -hmm. And I felt like a couple of the figures at the bottom were in that Lewisian moment of deciding, do I stay or do I not? Now that, yeah, that Lewis is inconsistent, at, at least at a surface reading, with Alma's instruction of Corianton. Okay. I should acknowledge that. And Alma's playing a pretty hard line. And, and you can imagine that that's an attempt to communicate an eternal truth mm -hmm. in a rhetoric that's relevant to the precise moment. Okay. And the precise moment is he thinks he can salvage his son by coming down hard. Now, some sons respond to that, most don't, but some do. <laughs> um, so it's possible that Alma is accentuating rhetorically uh, this notion of permanence, even here in mortality. Um, more than he might in another context okay. because of his worry about Corianton. And I think Nader may be putting words into her mouth <laughs> or, or words out of her, out of her brush, but okay. um, if she is taking that Lewis great divorce pivot, then she's looking at another rhetorical angle, mm -hmm. which you might use in someone a little less hard of heart and a little more broken. Yeah. Thinking about that possibility mm -hmm. that you you choose to stay in hell, um, so it resonates with me at some level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so I noticed that too, that there's the figures at the lower part of the circle that are facing away from the viewer, so away from us, and then there are figures more in light, including Christ here at the center, um, who are looking out towards us. Um, so there's sort of this play between dark and light and coming yeah. and going, yeah. and then also the circle within the square. So kind of, can you talk a little bit about these ideas of like opposition or complementarity? Or... Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this recently, yeah. this notion of, some people call them polarities okay, or yeah. dualisms or binarities mm -hmm. or polarities, whatever, but there's a sense of yin and yang. Yeah. Sort of. yeah male and female of, of living and death. There are, there are, in the universe, modes of interacting and, and groups or types that do that interacting. And they're related mm -hmm. in some important way. Even though they look like they're the opposites of each other, they're actually related. And there's yeah. that complementarity and you can see that there's a complementarity of living and dead in the Restoration that, the, I mean, as, as is true of few other religious traditions, the living and the dead are intercalated into each other's lives. Yeah. And in the Restoration, I think that's an important consideration. And there, there are other complementarities that feel more like those old school mm -hmm. antagonisms. Righteousness and wickedness. Sure. Right? Yeah. But, and I don't want to go too far. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to veer off the path by any stretch. <laughs> so there will be some complementarities where, but even the righteousness and wickedness. The, I just think about Lehi's deathbed sermon. Mm. That if there is no opposition, there is no growth. And so is there? Role for wickedness, maybe not ideal state for us to be wicked, of course. Mm -hmm. Alma's hammering that down the Korean. Yeah. But is there something about our being enmeshed in a world that has light and dark, righteousness and wickedness that is a source of growth? There mm -hmm. is a kind of healing complementarity in those. Yeah. And I wonder whether, as she, as Nader plays with those. Yeah those contrasts that can come into contact with each other. You get this possibility, and, and we think about this in the spirit world of preaching, you get this possibility of maybe the angels can talk to the devils and maybe even influence them for the better. Yeah. Could, could, we, could we preach to the devil? Yeah, maybe, that's, that's interesting, and I see too coming out of this, um, at the top, the light yeah. breaks through the border. Yeah. yeah, that's what made me choose the yeah. this painting to talk uh -huh. about. I went back and with a friend explored her other okay. uh, paint painters, other paintings. Yeah. Out she likes to do this. Okay. She likes to paint a border and then have the picture framed inside the painted border break through. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, oh, that's fine. I think it's it speaks fun. to that idea of growth and yeah, expansion. Yeah. Well, and breaking things. Yeah, breaking. I think there is a breaking, breaking boundaries and yeah, borders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time and, and space. Yeah. yeah. And there is a sense in which what breaks the simple rules of Je is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus and light, the light of Christ. That's what really breaks things and breaks things for the better. Yeah. I think about the Easter notion that this, the world brought, and this is Tom Wright, is really eloquent in this area, but you think about Good Friday and the weekend between Good Friday and Easter as a time when the world has amassed all of its angry power and expended yeah. all of its angry power against Jesus and ultimately failed. Oh. That Jesus broke the world. And then there's that Leonard Cohen, that, you know, <laughs> the cracks are what the, lets the light in. Yeah. Right? The yeah. cracks that let the God in. So yeah, I, I love yeah. that. That's what really drew me to the image. Because at first I was looking at it trying to decide how is this yeah. super different from a million other judgment paintings. Right. But I love that image of the life, the yeah. light and the life yeah. breaking out of that. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, I think, plays to that uncertainty mm -hmm. that I talked about with Alma's rhetorical posture to Corey and in that yeah. circumstance and possibly another rhetorical posture in another setting to another audience. 
things that would help people to come to Christ. And I think about that that spark of possibility that comes in Jesus' ability to break things. Yeah. That, that holds out that possibility that you try hard and you fail, mm-hmm. and there is light left for yeah. you at the end as well. Oh, I love those thoughts. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for thanks, visiting with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.